Can someone comment if they can hear me? I've actually never done a, an, uh, an Instagram live, so hopefully it's working. Great. Uh, thanks all for joining. Um, so I'm going to go over a few things in my kit today. If you don't know me, uh, I'm John Kelly. I, I'm an old primarily, uh, formerly a triathlete, and I, I mostly specialize in uh, really long uh, mountain races. Uh, so the kind of the, the longer and the uh, more elevation and the and the worse the conditions that's that's where I, I tend to do the best uh, so I'm here uh, at my home in, in Stanton Drew uh, looking at at the uh, magnificent Stanton Drew stone circle here and as you can see I haven't left in in quite a while I think my last haircut was uh, before toward in uh, September of last year so um, I put out a video uh, a few weeks ago, or I guess a few months ago now, uh, with some, some ultra running tips at home, uh, kind of things that you could practice at home. Uh, today I'm, I'm going to go through a, a few items in my kit and try to answer some questions as well. Um, I'm going to start off uh, going through uh, a lot of my, my shoe selection. This is a uh, sports shoes Instagram feed here. Um, and I have I've come to uh, have quite the collection here for a, a number of different conditions that I tend to race in. Uh, starting out uh, in ultra running, I've been running in the, the ASICS uh, GT2000 series of shoes since uh, sophomore year of high school. And, and they, I thought, well, they have, a, they have a trail version. I'll just use the GT2000 trail. Um, and, and for races like Barkley, they, they didn't hold up to uh, kind of the, the soles got ripped to shreds. Uh, and I've, I've learned uh, to uh, choose my shoes a, a bit more carefully since then. Um, not that the ASICS GT2000 isn't a uh, great series of, of shoes for the right conditions. Um, so I'm going to uh, kind of have my collection down here and I'm going to go through a few of them. Um, these are the, the Jackals, um, which is, is a new uh, model of shoe, which I'm, I'm extremely excited about. They're uh, still a bit wet and muddy uh, from my run yesterday here through uh, the uh, English fields in Somerset. Um, but this is, I believe, going to be my, my new go-to shoe uh, for kind of general purpose, longer distance things. They've, they've got... Uh, Good cushioning, uh, good stability, um, a nice wide toe box, and, and those are kind of the things that I would look for uh, in, in a shoe for just general purpose. I'm going to go run for a long time. They don't have the most aggressive tread on the bottom, so I wouldn't use this for really technical and, and really steep terrain. Um, and with the roomier toe box, uh, another thing to keep in mind is, is your foot might tend to slide a little bit. Um, so one trick that I've used here, uh, it, a lot of people may not know what this kind of second loop at the top of shoes are for. Um, but if you kind of take one lace and make a little hook there and pass your other lace uh, through, that, that's called a heel lock loop. Um, if, if you Google that, you can probably get a better diagram than what I've just showed here. Um, but that does a great job of, of keeping your foot from uh, sliding forward as you descend on hills. Uh, just be careful not to tighten it too much um, because at some point it'll start to dig in to the, the front of your ankle a little bit. And that's, that's a uh, recipe for tendonitis uh, over the course of a long race. Um, so you just want it to be nice and snug, uh, nice and snug throughout the midsection uh, with plenty of room in the toes uh, so that you're not um, 
banging your toes against the front of the shoe uh, when you descend. And, and that's something uh, for ultras, again, to keep in mind, I generally go up about half a size what I, I would normally uh, go up. Um, the next pair here, um, this is the Akasha. Uh, so this is the pair of shoes that I finished the Barkley in. Um, and really before the Jackal, this was my go-to shoe. Uh, I'll still likely uh, use this in some conditions. Um, but in all honesty, I'm, I see myself uh, moving to the Jackal, which has a, a bit more uh, cushioning for long runs. Um, the shoe that I did uh, most of the Barkley in is, is the Mutant. And this is definitely the, the most aggressive um, shoe for steep technical terrain and uh, longer distances. Uh, so it's got a, a really aggressive uh, lug pattern on the bottom with really sticky rubber. Uh, and a key thing in this shoe is that it, it really hugs, the lacing pattern hugs your midsection quite tightly. Uh, so if you're on any kind of slope that's to the side, you don't want your foot to essentially slip off the, the sole of the shoe uh, sideways. And that's that's something that if, if you have a, a looser shoe, um, one like the Akasha, uh, which has great padding and is, is great for, for later in the race, um, but your shoe might slip to the side a little bit on that sort of terrain and and cause quite a bit of, of problems. Uh, so this is, is definitely one of my, my favorites uh, for steep technical terrain, like you would, would find at Barkley. Um, this has only been out for about a year. Uh, it's the Captiva, and has quickly become my favorite for uh, shorter distance uh, races. And, and for me, I should clarify, um, I realize that my definition of, of, of short um, is... Uh, not really normal. Um, so when I, I say shorter uh, here, I really mean a hundred K or less. Um, this doesn't have um, as much padding in it as something like the Jackal does, uh, but it it fits like a slipper um, and, and really gives you a lot of great stability uh, and confidence uh, over any type of terrain. Uh, on these though, I generally go up half a size um, higher than I would in, in, say, the Jackal or the Akasha. They, they fit a little bit tighter. Um, they don't have as wide of a toe box. Uh, and, and really, uh, honestly, if, if you're someone that has wide feet, um, maybe not the shoe for you. Um, another one that used to be uh, one of my favorites for 100Ks and less, but uh, the Captiva has kind of taken over that role a bit, is the Bushido. Uh, this is still an incredibly comfortable shoe. It's got a lot um, stiffer in the Captiva and, and better protection, so I would still very much use this on any sort of uh, really rocky terrain uh, where you're having to worry about um, getting punched in the bottom of the foot um, by uh, different obstacles. Uh, these also um, tend to be a, a little bit uh, tighter uh, than, than the, the larger shoes, like the, the Jackal and, and the Akasha. Um, and I also just want to mention, on, on shoes like this, when you're on technical terrain, um, getting a pair of shoes that feels really nimble uh, is, is incredibly important. Uh, I, you know, the, the shoes with, with padding are, are great for the, the long races. Uh, they're great for protecting your joints and, and kind of delaying the onset of fatigue. Um, but in really technical terrain, it's, it's important to also still have a good feel for the ground uh, and still feel uh, confident moving over it. Uh, these are the most minimalist that I go. Um, well, actually, there's a similar version of this, but this is the Helios. Um, they're, they're pretty lightweight. They, they honestly do. <laughs> the upper feels a bit like a slipper wearing them. And so I, I would use this um, primarily for any race less than 50K that might have significant uh, road portions in it. 
I actually, uh, I ran the Berlin Marathon in, in a pair of these. And as, as far as road shoes go, uh, of course, they're, they're no um, Vaporfly or Alphafly or, or whatever they're called now. Uh, but they got the job done um, and it was, it was fun to run them. Um, one thing to be aware on these shoes is they do have these ridges on the bottom. Uh, and if you're running something that has a lot of small gravels, uh, those can actually poke in between those ridges and, and jab you in the feet a little bit. Uh, so something to be aware of uh, if you're in that sort of terrain. Um, around here, um, where I am in the English countryside, that's not really much of a problem. Uh, speaking of which, I should also mention that the Captiva has um, a Gore-Tex version, uh, which uh, I, I use primarily for two things. Uh, one, if it's like around here and I'm running through damp fields, um, you know, it's, it's great to be able to do my run commute into the office and uh, arrive with actual dry feet. Um, the second situation is if I'm doing a cold and wet race, um, like the spine, and then the Gore-Tex isn't so much to keep my feet dry, um, because they're going to get wet no matter what. If I'm through bogs, um, Gore-Tex isn't going to help you. Um, but it adds a, a really good uh, extra layer of, of insulation, which kind of acts, uh, gives a, a wetsuit effect uh, to your feet. Um, I'm, I'm seeing here, I... Sorry, again, this is my first ever uh, Instagram live. I'm, I'm trying to make sure I don't miss things. Um, but I see here um, on, on Joma shoes, and, and to be honest, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't know. I haven't used them. Um, so that is something I, I actually should have um, said right at the outset from this. Um, so I, I do have a uh, partnership with, with La Sportiva, so they provide most of my shoes, and, and that's how I end up uh, with this selection. Um, but it was something where I, I used their shoes uh, beforehand, uh, not uh, only because the, the partnership exists. Um, speaking of the spines, two more that I'll, I'll mention here. Um, So these are the uh, Uragana, which is, uh, these are basically the mutant, uh, except they're Gore-Tex, and they have this built-in gaiter, um, which is great for keeping stuff out of your shoes. Um, that's something that for most trail running, uh, uh, running even in the summer, uh, getting little bits of, of dirt and grit in your shoe. Uh, over the course of a long race, that, that can absolutely uh, wreak havoc on your feet. So, so anything you can do to just keep that out, um, even if it's fine grit that you probably don't notice is, is getting in there, that's um, extremely valuable. Um, so these, these worked very well um, for the spine. I, I used this exact pair for the first half of the race. Um, and then the second half, I switched to the Blizzard, which is the, um, again, these are the, but Gore-Tex and with a Gator on top. These are the Uragano with little cleats in the bottom. Um, so, uh, again, just kind of an evolution of, of the Mutant. Uh, the, the cleats, I don't know how well you can see those here, but they're basically just little tiny studs. And I was a little worried about whether those would help um, or hurt uh, running on the Penine Way, where there's a, a good deal of sections that have the flat, rocky slabs on them. Uh, and fortunately, they, they did pretty well. Uh, I didn't find myself slipping on any of those slabs um, because they're, they're kind of flat stubs rather than like track spikes. Uh, there are also companies that make uh, those sorts of things that you can screw into the bottom of any pair of shoe. Uh, just be careful with um, what shoes you use those with. I, I tried those before uh, one year in preparing for the Barkley, and I found that the, the rubber in the shoes I was using uh, just the, the studs ripped themselves out, and then I was left with no studs and a kind of a gash ripped in the bottom of my shoe. 
so if you're going to go that route, um, make sure that uh, you you have um, hard hard rubber uh, on the shoes and that the the studs are going to go um, deep enough uh, in in order to stay in there. Um, how did you cope with water ingress into your shoes with Gore-Tex inside on the spine? Uh, the short answer to that is, is I didn't. Um, I just accepted that my shoes were going to get wet. Uh, and, or sorry, my feet were going to get wet. Um, I've been running through the bogs where <laughs> there were times where I, I ended up uh, quite deep in those and, and nothing uh, that you can put on is well, short of wearing like fishing waders or something, um, it, it's not going to keep you dry. So um, again, the Gore-Tex helped keep my feet warm, uh, which is, is incredibly important for that type of situation. Uh, and whenever I arrived at one of the um, aid stations where, where my drop bag was, uh, one of the checkpoints, uh, if I, I was in a situation where I felt I could keep my feet dry for a little while, um, then I would switch into dry socks. Um, and also if I swept for a little while, take my shoes off, take my socks off, put baby powder on my feet, sweep barefoot and just let them dry out absolutely as, as much as possible. Um, so just giving them those momentary breaks, um, where they have a chance to dry out can, uh, really, uh, prevent having issues. Uh, so as, as far as what I normally do uh, for my feet, uh, I have, um, I, I use a double layer approach um, and, and go with a pair of toe socks uh, as the inner layer. Uh, these are exoskin uh, toe socks. Um, and then just a pair of normal socks on top of that. Underneath, um, I, I normally uh, put some type of, um, there's, there's kind of foot creams, uh, trail toes, run goo, a, a whole bunch of companies that, that make, uh, various creams to kind of keep your feet, uh, soft. Uh, and then I'll, I'll normally take my inner pair of socks and dump a little bit of baby powder inside and shake it up and put that on top of my, um, lubed up feet. And, and it really, uh, does pretty well. Um, there are a couple of races where I, I've had uh, blister issues, uh, and actually someone uh, beforehand uh, asked about what do I pack for blister and, and foot maintenance. Uh, and uh, that's definitely something uh, you, you want to be able to take care of because it, it can very quickly end your race. Um, you know, it's, it's like having a, a Lamborghini uh, with flat tires. You, you can't do anything. Uh, so in most cases, um, the, the, the general wisdom on blisters and just normal circumstances is don't pop them, let them be, um, don't, um, risk infection. However, uh, if you're in the middle of a race and you need to finish, uh, you're, you're, you're probably going to have to pop a few. Uh, and so have some type of needle, um, where you can poke some, some nice holes in there and really drain it out. Um, and then there's, um, there are a number of solutions that will kind of help that stay dry. Um, I'm trying to remember the, the name of the, the one that, that I normally have in my pack. It's like tincture of benzoin, maybe that sounds right. Um, I believe just Google that before you, uh, stick random things on your feet in case I misremembered the name. Um, but basically it's, it's something that, um, will help keep that blister dry, uh, as you continue going. Uh, so put that on there and then, uh, learn how to effectively tape your feet. And if you know that you are, uh, susceptible to blister problems, kind of learn where those problem areas are for you and, and maybe do some, some taping beforehand as well. Uh, I've, I've been saved a, a couple of times by uh, medics at races that just were absolute miracle workers, uh, with their feet at the Franklin's, uh, 200 mile, uh, race last year. It, it's five loops. And I came in from the fourth loop, barely able to walk. Um, so we're so bad. 
uh, and they they fixed them up and and got me back out there, and I was uh, was able to to continue on and and do quite well on the fifth loop. Uh, so that's uh, you know whether it's blisters or something else, that's that's important to uh, remember in an ultra is there are going to be issues that seem like it's done, uh, but you can you can still come back from those things. Uh, if you're prepared and, and you take the time to kind of stop and think, okay, well, what do I need to do here? Um, got another question from beforehand uh, of, of sore feet. Uh, how do I change shoe style uh, to accommodate it or switch to a new shoe? Uh, how often, how many miles do I put on a shoe and, and do I recover with a soaker massage? Um, so I, I don't uh, do anything uh, on, on the recovery side for the most part. Uh, if it's something like the spine, uh, then yeah, I, I do some Epsom salt. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a, there's a picture of me at the finish of the sign where they're sticking my feet in the shoe, the, 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 the little bath. And, I, you know, I have this huge grimace on my face, one of these things that just, you know, doesn't feel very good, but but then it feels great, uh, and, and it has to be done. Uh, so, so Epsom salt in, in a warm bath can, can really help uh, with that sort of thing. Uh, I'm kind of limited, though, on the recovery options just by time. Uh, I generally don't have time uh, for the, the training I would like to do uh, on its own. Shoe styles, it's, it's very important to uh, identify what works for you. Uh, so again, some of these shoes uh, I mentioned, um, it, you know, if you have a wider foot, then they might not work for you. Um, another shoe that, that I didn't mention actually uh, is is the Lycan, uh, which which is a great shoe, but they just they don't fit my feet as well as some of the others. So I um, I don't use these. Uh, but if you have a wider foot, these could be a, a really great option uh, for you. And there's actually Lycan 2 out now uh, that has uh, some improvements as, as well as a, a Vortex version of it. Um, and generally on a longer race, I, I will switch shoes uh, periodically throughout the race just to uh, regain some of the cushion. Over that distance, any shoe is, is going to really start to compress uh, and lose that cushioning. And, and being able to swap into a new pair uh, can, can be pretty useful. Uh, and, and particularly if that new pair is, is dry and you're going to be able to keep it dry uh, for a, a good amount of time. Um, switching to a, you know, mileage on the shoes, uh, I generally kind of go by feel on that. Uh, if, if my feet start hurting more than normal or I feel that the shoes have lost a bit of bounce, uh, I'll, I'll normally move on. Um, but most pairs of shoes, it's, it's four to 500 miles. Um, let's see, uh, have I ever considered running the Cape Wrath Ultra? Um, yeah, I, that, that looks like a, an incredible race. I would love to uh, explore more of that part of the country once, uh, once we're able to do so. Right now, I guess we're still not allowed to be away from our residences overnight. Um, but also, you know, it's races like that take a huge chunk uh, out of the schedule, uh, not only in, in terms of training, but more so in, in terms of recovery. Uh, so there's there's a lot of stuff um, that I want to do, and I'm, I'm hoping I can fit it in at some point, but at this stage um, of where I am, I, I do want to focus on, on quality of my races and, and be able to perform uh, so that that means not stuffing my schedule um, quite as full as like I did last year when I, I kind of moved over here and got excited with, with all the UK and European races and said, oh, I, I'm going to do that one and that one and that one. And I made it halfway through the summer and um, yeah, <laughs> that didn't go too well for me. I, I was not uh, performing the way that I wanted to. Um, Am I going to attempt a Bob Graham round or Charlie Ramsey round? Uh, so yes and, and yes. I, I did a Bob Graham round last year as, as part of a, a project that I called the Grand Round. I tried to uh, do Patty Buckley, Bob Graham, and Charlie Ramsey consecutively uh, and ride my bike in between them. 
Um, I, I made it through Patty Buckley and Bob Graham, uh, and I uh, got on my bike on the way to Scotland and, and had to call it. Um, definitely learned a lot from it. I'm, I'm hoping to give that another go uh, sometime, again, when it's um, allowable to do so. Um, I, I learned a lot from that attempt. Uh, and it's it's kind of um, it's agonizing looking out at what we've had here over the past month uh, can, compared to the uh, absolute monsoon uh, that I tried to do that in last year. Uh, am I eyeing any of the Irish rounds? Uh, I I would definitely uh, love to get over there uh, at some point. Um, as you can tell from my my last name, uh, that's kind of my my family heritage. It's you know, I'm not going to pretend I'm, I'm Irish by any means. My family's been in the U.S. for 200 years. Um, but I, I would love to get over um, and explore some of those um, and the, the island as a whole, uh, really. Um, how do I decide to, to call a race? Um, uh, um, are you asking how do I decide to, to quit? <laughs> um, I'll, I'll wait for some, some clarification uh, on that question uh, before I answer, but I, I think I had um, um, asked beforehand um, regarding injuries. Uh, so have I ever been injured? Um, I've been quite fortunate uh, to be able to um, not have any major injuries. Uh, I've I've definitely had some small ones that have kept me out kind of for, for a week or two um, where I've maybe tweaked something in a race. Um, after my the grand round attempt last year, I ended up with some really bad tendonitis um, in one of my shins and, and couldn't do much for, for a little while. Um, but I, um, you know, it didn't keep me out for an extended period of time. And I, I've been uh, fortunate in that. And, and also it, it's, it's kind of my my training um, regimen. Uh, so I, I work with, with David Roach and relative to a lot of people, I, I'm not super high mileage. Um, you know, I put in 70-ish miles per week um, compared to a lot of people doing these things that, that are putting in twice that. Um, and, you know, part of that is, is for longevity in the sport. I want to be doing these things and, and improving for a long time. Part of it is just um, not having time, really, to, to put in a, a lot more mileage than that. So uh, when we were all actually going to offices and, and places of work, pretty much all my weekday mileage was, was my run commute. Uh, what would be your best tips to train for the Bob Graham? So really on, on something like, well, A, the Bob Graham, um, navigation is, is useful. You can get the, the GPS track and, and mostly follow that. Uh, but being able to, to kind of identify uh, different features and, and where uh, you need to go and, and where the best line is, uh, it, it, particularly in, in some of the boggy sections, that's uh, quite valuable. Uh, the other piece of this, and, and any of of these types of things that, that have that much uh, elevation to it, is, is to practice the descents. Um, you know, it's not something you have to do uh, every single day. Um, you know, definitely not to the extent I, I've done for Barkley before. Um, but, but a few weeks to a month uh, leading up to it, you, you need to get a few big workouts where you go out and you just you hammer uh, the descents. And that's going to put the kind of uh, stresses on your quads uh, that are, are going to uh, help you make it through something like the Bob Graham. It's, it's the repeated bout effect, and it's, it's surprising how quickly your muscles can adapt to that sort of thing. Um, but if you don't adapt them beforehand, it's it's going to be a tough day. Uh, how does the UK compare to training in the US and what weekly mileage do you do? Um, and, and thanks for the, the good luck too. Um, so it's it's been largely the, the same for me in, in terms of, of how I train and, and when I train in the US. 
I had a run commute uh, through a park. Uh, here I, I have a run commute through, well, I had a run commute uh, through fields. Uh, and, and so <laughs> the biggest difference has been learning how the footpath system works around here. Uh, you know, and I've got my little OS maps and I, I try to follow it. And it, it took a, quite a while to get used to the concept of just coming to this gate and here's a wide open field and it's, you know, I'm supposed to go that way, like some footpath that someone walked across with their sheep 400 years ago and, and now it's a right of way, which, which is great, <laughs> but there's not always uh, a, a clear to follow um, and, and coming from where I come from it, it's also a bit odd uh, to kind of be running through people's property and, and by their barns and, and up their drives and, and everything else uh, so it, it's been fun uh, exploring a new area uh, for sure but as far as the type of training I do and, and the amount uh, it hasn't differed uh, significantly and, and again it's, it's generally a, around 70 miles or so a week, uh, which might go up and down uh, depending on how much elevation I'm putting in. So, you know, around uh, 10 hours or, or so. Um, so, you know, I, I can stick around here a, a bit longer. I, I guess this was um, supposed to be 30 minutes and I, I don't want to take their Instagram channel um, if, if they're trying to, to get back on and, and do something else. Um, you know, I've got a, a few more things of, of kit here. I'll, well, I'll just quickly. Um, headlamps or head torches, as you call them, um, extremely important uh, for the types of things I do and, and really for, for anything. Anytime you go out in the mountains, I don't care if it's the middle of the day, take one of these with you. Take one of these and a really light rain jacket. Um, and something like this. This is a, a Karaden B free bottle um, that has a built-in filter in the top. Um, so you take you take this, take a head torch, you take a light rain jacket. You're, you're hopefully going to be able to uh, weather uh, most situations out there. Um, this is is a Petzolactic cork. I use it for uh, most um, things of reasonable distance that is well marked. Uh, I tend to put it on the low setting when I'm up and pump it up to the second setting when I'm descending and, and going a bit faster. And using that combo, most of the time I can make it through the full night on, on one battery. Um, this one is, is much um, brighter, uh, also bulkier, uh, goes through batteries quicker, but something like Barkley, um, this is the um, Petzl Now Plus. Um, it's, it's going to, um, you know, really allow me to see where I'm going when maybe there's not a trail or any sort of course marking. And it can also connect to your phone to where you can tell it, be as bright as you can be, um, for eight hours of battery life. Uh, and, and it'll, it'll do that. And it, it adapts based on ambient light as well. Uh, just be careful if you're running alongside someone else that has one, because they'll kind of fight each other. They'll, they'll sense each other's light and they, they won't really know what to do. Um, what do I use for hydration? So yeah, again, this, this Kata Den um, Be Free bottle is an absolute lifesaver for me. I'm not sponsored anyway. I just, I love this bottle. Um, and I'll, I'll generally um, put that in my, my vest here, um, which this is kind of my go-to selection on the ultimate direction vests uh it's a, a mountain vest uh it's got a you know i used the adventure vest for the spine which is a bit bigger but this one is just uh really versatile for most things in terms of uh capacity and weight um and has these bottles in the front uh that that fit quite well and that are slanted so they don't dig into your chest and i really prefer these over using any kind of bladder um, and, and tough to clean, uh, I would really only use one of those if I were going somewhere that I expected to not have access to any sort of water uh, for an extended period of time, and, and then I would drop a bladder in my bag. Uh, but if there's any water, like on the spine, I filled this thing up from a peat bog. 
And, you know, it was, it was a little bit disgusting to look at the uh, kind of reddish water floating around in there, but, you know, it, it, it got the job done. Um, but using a pack like that, and then if necessary, supplementing it uh, with a, a waist belt. Um, so this is a, an adventure belt, uh, or actually it's a race belt with an adventure pocket. Uh, and so I had this on spine just for kind of overflow and easy access uh, to food and other things that I needed to swap in and out quickly, whereas my pack had more of the required kit. I was able to see stuff that I didn't expect to uh, need to break into. Um, oh, and these little bottles are also great for uh, gels. Uh, you know, gels come in those tiny little packets, but most companies you can also get them in larger jugs. Fill one of these up. It's better for the environment. It's much easier during the race. Um, it's, and it's cheaper. It's just a, all around uh, works much better. Uh, so I'll, I'll rely on that in a race. And also, again, for the things I do, there's a lot of real food in there, and I have a I have a, a literal list of, of U.S. and U.K. Uh, junk food essentially that uh, is is are my go-to's for races, uh, because when it comes to things where you're out there for days, you're not just fueling, you're you're replacing meals, uh, and no uh, sports nutrition company is going to tell you, hey, gel, it's it's what's for dinner. Um, so definitely uh, have a lot of options for things that are going to give you uh, and, and are really going to, to give you some good sustenance. Um, I, I think that's about everything I, I have uh, stashed around here. Um, like I said, I, I, a few months ago, I have three videos on, on YouTube. I'm not exactly the most uh, active uh, video person, but uh, I put one out a few months ago with some ultra running tips at home. Um, my YouTube channel is, is Random Forest Runner, um, same as my Instagram handle and, and most of my, my other social media. Uh, so that's got some more things on it that uh, will hopefully uh, be useful. Uh, if uh, anyone wants any clarification on any of this stuff, feel free to, to send me a message. Uh, but otherwise, and uh, hope y'all are able to uh, get out there and enjoy the trails, uh, even if we can't venture all that far from uh, home at, at the moment. Uh, but, but be sure to, to share this with friends, uh, and keep safe, and, and tag sports shoes in, in your own uh, stay-at-home stores. So thanks all, and, and hopefully see you out there sometime. Well, if I can finish, figure out how to stop this video. Oh, there it is. End button. Thank you all. Cheers.